Hi folks, you know I'd say uh, and now for something completely different but I think that's been taken so I guess I'll go with now for something unusual and seemingly original at least the way that <clears throat> the ideas are going to be presented to you today hopefully and um, here's, a, here's the rundown here first I'm going to go over the thumbnail then I'm going to read from a speech I wrote six long years ago before I got interested in the other thing, which is why I want to get this done now, because I think the other thing's edging closer to maybe uh, getting a lot more attention. And I don't want to get this, uh, I want to, to at least get something out there on video about this before that might happen, maybe. Now, yes, I'm going to read you about 15 to 20 minutes from a speech. It's well written. I like it, but I haven't practiced it. So it might, it's going to be a little rough, a little not as smooth as some of the other things I've done recently. But um, like I said in that one of those, one of those videos, you ain't got to trust me, dipstick. Just listen to the words I'm saying to you. That's from a, from a movie. Uh, yeah, we're going to go back and read them. And then this thing refers extensively to a, to a scholarly article, scientific paper, authority of all authorities from the mainstream of the mainstream, the Argonne Lab. And uh, in my view, it is overlooked and buried in a dusty drawer, but we'll get into that. And it's a big energy paper, huge in my opinion, but... So I'm going to read, then I'm going to read the speech. Then I'm going to go over some images with you. Then I'm going to go over some Twitter moments, have some last words, and leave. I have no idea how long this is going to take. So I'm doing it by video and not live. Uh, it is not practiced or rehearsed. It, uh, so this way I can pause here and there. And uh, at least get started. So let's start with the thumbnail. All right. You know, they say most people make the thumbnail last. I make it first. I'd set up the whole video, if you could, before you upload it. Because that way you know where you're going. Uh, well, that's just uh, my two cents on thumbnails. But I like this thumbnail. Uh, this is a beautiful image taken by this photographer, local photographer here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania area, DaveDeCello.com, who allows people to uh, use his images with permission. And I happen to remember the day this was taken, too. So, you know, there's lightning right in front of the Westinghouse building. My parents met at Westinghouse, so I'm a Tesla baby. And here I am years later looking at uh, electrons and craziness. That maybe it's not so crazy. That's why I'm on here. Uh, you know, it's not to get clicks because I am not that uh, char charismatic. But let's do the thumbnail. It's <clears throat> that's where the interest lies. Artificial lightning, I call it. Why? Because it sounds better than low energy pair production in water, A.K.A. the E.A.Q., which means aqueous electron. Um, and plus, that'll sell. Would that sell to a uh, startup? Artificial lightning, but for Uber, you know. Plus, people can understand it. I was researching this for quite some time before I understand what I was doing, what, I, what it really was. Was I looking for photosynthesis, but the simple way? Was I trying to do photosynthesis? Now, what's the other? Electrolysis, is that what it's called? that you do in the uh, high school and college labs where you put in electricity and you create a gas from water and a photon exits, I believe. It's been a while, folks. I, I, like I said, I got into this before, uh, before the other thing. So you're going back to 2012, 11, whatever. I did a lot of work on it. And then the other thing kind of got more uh, interest because of the UFO stuff coming out. Anyway, uh, we'll get into that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you hear, uh, can we harness energy, etc., you know. Um, this isn't harnessing it. This is creating it. And there's a little known process, which we're going to discuss in mind-numbing detail. Talk about rabbit holes. 
Um, and uh, I think it might be very useful in the electrical energy uh, realm. I mean, if you could create a rechargeable battery that runs on light alone, which is what, what I'm saying here, basically, do you think that would be handy? Anyway, we'll get into it. And you make your own decisions here. I am not selling anything today, except the, your curiosity. Try to get your curiosity going. All right, so we're gonna we're off the thumbnail now. Now we're gonna read the speech, which uh, I hadn't seen this in years, until like two days ago or something, because it's so long and wordy. But actually, but the first 20 minutes are not bad, and that's, uh, that's what uh, you need to jumpstart this uh, presentation. So I am going to read from it, and uh, yeah, they're not bad. The rest of it, there's, a, there's too many personal inside jokes to myself, and you know, it needs to be uh, re-edited. But let's get started with this. First, let me check and make sure I'm on the screen and everything's good here. This stuff is all linked below. Uh, so you should be able to find this and read it yourself. This is on my website. The other stuff's on my Twitter accounts, which can, can, are now public again. They can, you know, he switches it around. Sometimes you have to be a member, sometimes you don't. Now we're back on, you don't, so that's good. Uh, but the key to this thing is a scientific paper, which I finally found after years of uh, going around in circles and trying to prove something to myself. There it was. But you had to dig for it, and, it, and it's not under the search terms you want it to be, but we'll get into that. But it had, when you, once you get into it, it has all the dirt, all the good stuff buried. You know, I hate to say this will put the solar panels out of business, the batteries out of business, what, you know. It's something to look into for the future. Let's just leave it at that and save the, uh, you know, sensationalism for the thumbnails. Artificial lightning is about as far as I can go right now. Hello and good morning. This was supposed to be for a startup group or something. This is a talk about low energy excess aqueous electrons, or the EAQ, known as artificial lightning, known by me. They're both electrons brought about by visible light interacting with water, whether in a cloud or a laboratory. So basically they're the same thing, but artificial lightning is easier to visualize. First, I'll explain the mechanism as seen in the lab and the physics behind it. Then I'll talk a little bit about lightning. Then I'll tell you why this should be pursued as an electrical energy generation and storage source. I'll describe why this apparently has been overlooked, because I find it hard to believe myself. And then I will rant about why this is a breakthrough innovation, how great it is, blah, blah, and etc. I'll spare you that today. That's way down in the speech. Finally, I'll make a few suggestions about what has to be done here and ask for your help. I will use repetition and gesticulation, like the big blue photon, the little gamma photon, the tiny electron, which might get annoying, and probably the occasional finger quote. Wrote this six years ago, folks. And I'm afraid it's going to get technical. But all of this is on web pages you can read later. So if you don't like this so far, just read the links. All right, so what is this EAQ? Low energy excess aqueous electron thing? That's probably lightning. Well, According to the scholarly articles and papers I've spent years reading and rereading, I got a box in that closet. You can hardly lift that thing. Moving it and moving. Anyway, a lot of papers and I took notes the whole time. Well, according to the scholarly articles and papers I've spent years reading and rereading, there are numerous types of loose electrons in water. 
water ice or water vapor in clouds. But this one, called excess and low energy, finger quotes, that's why I had needed the finger quotes. Because when I'm doing that, I'm copying it right out of uh, scholarly articles. Things like that, I don't invent. Elect uh, artificial lightning, yeah, I made that up. But <clears throat> things like the next line, it's called low energy because it's big and slow. A regular... I, I don't want to get off too far. Because half of this is me explaining it to myself. I never heard of a big, slow electron. I only heard of little, tiny, regular ones. It's called excess because it's stuck or trapped in a cavity between clusters of molecules and not interacting. In other words, it can be in storage. Yeah, that... Ever notice how there's lightning at night? It's in storage. It's unique because it appears seemingly out of nowhere after wavy light particles called photons are shot into a water cluster of a few, mo few molecules. Water being H2O, a basketball with two tennis balls stuck on it. I had to visualize this stuff myself too, folks. Um, but that's roughly how I start thinking about it because I, I have to visualize things. That's how I understand things. Um, in those days, I'd look out the window and pretend there was a big giant blue photon in the parking lot. And it spinning around, what would it look like? Because who can imagine a thing that small? You know, I can't. So I blow them up. Where was I? In other words, it can be in storage. It's unique because it appears seemingly out of nowhere after wavy light particles called photons, I read this, are shot into a water cluster of a few molecules. Water being H2O, a basketball with two tennis balls stuck on it. These are typically photons from the high end of, the, of visible light, ranging from dark blue-violet color to barely invisible ultraviolet, which you may call tanning rays or burning rays. Down around red, the electron will fall apart and decay to white light. Lightning, poof, it blows apart. The electrons are formed from mainly visible light in lightning, right? But if they fall apart too fast, they blow back into light and it's all wavelengths. They're briefly red, but then they just like blow back into all wavelengths. Now, now, a photon is just a wavy particle of light, ranging from large radio waves, we can only read with devices, radios, to smaller temperature ranges, waves, we can feel with our skin but not see, to even smaller visible light waves, we can see with our eyes, all the way to tiny invisible high energy wavelength particles, like gamma photons, two of which make up a typical electron. It's all light. So, yes, I know, I know about the two, fo you know, this is different, okay? That's why it's new. That's why I'm saying it here, I'm spending my time saying that an electron can be made out of big red ones, okay? I know about the gammas. I know you know. Some of you really want to tell me right now but just keep listening and then go read that argon thing. I'll tell you all about it. Or is it argon? I don't, I don't know. The big national lab out in Chicago. I mean, that's pretty legit. It's, and then I started talking to people from there. I'll, I'll get into that. Think of a photon as a moving figure eight infinity symbol. And when two of them merge crosswise, an electron is formed, roughly. And after a low-energy EAQ forms, it can absorb even, still even more light. The visible blue seen in water, ice, or sometimes lightning, which is where, that's the, that's the visible blue light seen in water, ice, or sometimes lightning, which is where electric blues come from. 
it's blue light. So, when you see blue in ice or water, think of this talk. That's trapped energy, just like heat trapped in coal or uranium. Which, the uranium, eh, that's, I don't, I'd take that out now. I'd say coal or something else, not uranium. Now, at this point, it's very important to differentiate. The EAQ is not a normal-sized electron that was already there and got knocked loose somehow. That's usually called ionization. So, we know all that basic science. Believe me, I went over it. I almost went insane going over this stuff. Uh, that's usually called ionization. So, I went insane looking through an ionization paper... Because that's what they expected, and that's what they mostly got. But in some ranges of water and light, you're going to get lightning. <laughs> it, it's there in black and white. But you really got to dig it out, man. <laughs> anyway. Nor is this, but I did, and it's all in quotes. And we'll go right back over it line by line if you want. What is it, 60 pages? I forgot. Or paragraphs, I don't even know. Nor is this the... That's usually ionization. We're not talking about that. Nor is this the photoelectric effect pushing existing electrons like or in ordinary solar. It's not ionization. It's not ordinary solar that we're talking about. Those both involve normal size electrons, which are much smaller and high energy. That kind interact in water as expected. They aren't trapped and stored. We don't care about those electrons today. We care about the ones that mysteriously appear from two photons of visible light. These are electrons made out of color, folks. We care, about, but they shrink so fast. Then they shrink to normal size. That was another mystery. How long did it take to figure that one out? And why? We care about the ones that are trapped, that are in the wrong size and in the wrong place. We care about the ones that are not interacting normally, which means they're stored like in a battery until released. All right? Stored and recharged by light. That release, called ballistic motion, can be controlled in several ways by another photon pushing it, sound, or a magnetic field, an electric field, a gravitational field, or even mechanically, like if I shake this pretend bottle of water. Pardon me, I need a sip of lukewarm coffee. I didn't plan for this today. But my new camera arrived. I got it yesterday. Plus, I want to get it done. Suddenly, oh, okay, then, bang, boom, flash. Suddenly, the big low electron, low energy electrons shrink to normal size and all rush together to what's called the conduction band, where all the other loose, ionized, normally sized ones already are. So they get together with their uh, regular sized electrons and because the molecular structure, it gets a little bit, not inexplicable, but it's just the way it is in science, in nature. I wish I had a better way to understand why, those, why they shrink. It's because of what's around them and the environment there. But I wish I had a better understanding of it. But it doesn't matter. Because they do it. That's what, you know. Then, bang, boom, flash. Suddenly, the low, big low energy uh, electrons shrink to normal size and all rush together to what's called the conduction band, where other loose, ionized, normal sized ones already are. And in the lab, the conduction band can be captured on electrodes, which incidentally happen to look like little lightning rods. So, in other words, 
red, big giant red electrons don't go on to the little lightning rods. Okay, they shrink. That's documented. Then they go on in life to do useful work. Those we can use, not the big ones that fall apart if they don't shrink quick enough. But remember, they might suddenly fall apart too and decay back into visible light emission, flashing quickly to white with a little touch of electric blue. That happens with light from lower down in the visible range. It's too low energy. You gotta be in that sweet spot, which is closer to blue, but you don't want it too. Oh no, 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 I got that backwards, didn't I? That happens with light <laughs> lower down in the visible range. It's too low energy. If you're too, too reddish, too red, you're too big. You start flopping around too fast. If you are bluish, you got a better shot at it. And I think the perfect one is ultraviolet, which you can't see. Uh, because it goes right into glassy ice, which is the kind of thing you'd have in a, wa in a frozen uh, water cloud up there. Cold one. So it all makes sense. You can the process makes a lot of sense. Um, <clears throat> if the electron is too big, it'll collapse. As I mentioned before, the threshold for that is somewhere in red. If the electron is too big and slow, it'll collapse and flash. I re read this. Once again, this is unique behavior. A normal electron in water does not act like this. On top of all that, all the stuff around the low energy excess electron is out of whack and unexplained. Scientists couldn't explain it, folks, in Argonne Lab, but they, they, got, they did, though. They did. These photochemists, which I believe they were, see, they had to step out of their lane a little bit. First off, they're not assigned to go look for this. They're assigned to go shoot a bunch of laser beams and see what happens. Then they come up with something out of whack and unexplained in a certain range, which happens to coincide, and they didn't put this together that I saw, or anyone else. I don't know why. Um, and then it, it's been a while. Uh, a normal electron out of whack and unexplained. The water molecule arrangements are often described as, quote, unclear. Things seem to have happened out of order for a normal ionization to have happened. Too fast, too slow, or not at all. They go into it all. They look at it from every angle of the, because they find this anomaly and they wonder what the heck it causes it. And uh, so they look at it from the speed, the wavelengths, the, you know, the temperatures, the pressure, all that stuff. Things that shouldn't have happened didn't. And think, no, things that should have happened didn't. And things that shouldn't have happened did happen. Nothing is where it's supposed to be. How scary is that for a scientist? The extra photons are left unaccounted for as are the unmatched protons and the unexpected ions that seem to be missing. And, the, you know, <sighs> this, this, this is wrong, this is wrong, this, this, this is different, this is anomalous, that is unexplained, what are their words? Unclear. If this was only hydrogen atoms stripped of electrons, as one would expect, what happened to the unpaired protons? Anyone ever heard of a proton s storm? You know, tonight, partly cloudy, chance of proton lightning. Well, well, uh, you know, you conservation of matter types. Uh, inside the box, is that where they are? Is that, are they? I didn't see them. Again, it's inconsistent with ionization and normal electrons. This is me convincing myself, convincing you, and convincing, most importantly, people that know a little bit about this or the uh, common knowledge. They're just going to say, that's crazy, that's off, that's wrong. 
dismiss it immediately, which is understandable. But apparently these guys at Argonne didn't dismiss it immediately. They went in and dug it out. But they really didn't. They're not applied physicists, which the world needs more of, I've concluded. Um, anyway, where are we? It's uh, in, all inconsistent, unpaired protons. Yet somehow these things realign themselves quicker than expected and quickly return to normal. When you're reading the scholarly articles and papers about this, right about here is where the usual familiar lingo disappears. Read it yourself, folks. That guy doesn't understand ionization. It's right in the name of the paper. No kidding. It's in the name of the paper. Now read the paper. The hard science gets very squishy, and they have to step out of their world for a moment. It's kind of fun watching them squirm. Decades later. <laughs> to be fair, though, most of this is happening on the very edge of measurement. 1996. We're talking about very tiny objects acting in short time spans. So the usual empirometrics, I used to love that word for some reason, won't work here. Charts, graphs, and numbers alone will not suffice. Things have to be described in plain language. Words and phrases like, quote, and you read the paper, to, uh, read this speech, and then read the papers to find the quotes, and you will see that I am not extrapolating here. I like confirmation bias, especially when I find it in real life. Quote, unknown, and quote, not well understood, unquote, come up. Things are described as, quote, seemingly, probably, possibly, blah, 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 caused by, quote, decaying excitons, unquote. Excited polarons, unquote. Quote, polarized excitons, unquote, are caused by... Then it starts getting interesting, doesn't it? See, for they, they throw those out because those sound good, right? Sure, it's, uh, yeah, the decaying excitons. It was excited polaritons, that's what it was. It was other kids. But then it gets interesting. Who are caused by, quote, changed in nuclear arrangements, unquote. Who changed them? How? In a, quote, nonlinear absorption spectrum, unquote. Yeah, all right, yeah, that sounds good. Esoteric physics terms appear in chemistry and biochemistry articles, like, quote, waves, quote, energy packets, quote, wave packets, and quote, quasi-particles. So what they started to do is say, hey, this is some crazy physics uh, Feynman stuff we're getting into here. We're, we're speculating kind of out of our, our area of expertise here. So let's go over to Feynman's papers and use the words he does, okay? Like energy packets. I think that's one of his wave packets. Which are good words. Einstein and Planck and all the quantization of light. And then the rest of it. Uh, but that's what's going on here. Two, one plus one equals... No, one plus one equals one here. But the one is joined into two. If you split it apart. They use words like gener generated. Oh, I loved finding that, man. I dug for years looking for that. Quote generated, unquote, quote, forms, unquote, and here's, here's the big one, folks, and, quote, created, unquote, to explain this, where the word ionization would usually be, all right, it's right there, I'll point it out word by word, line by line in that thing, I'll go to the mat, I'll die on that hill, one of the better papers says that the electron might be squeezed out, which isn't bad. Created is the big one, generated forms. In other words, it's new. That's what we're trying to do here. Create value. Creating new value. That's what we're doing here. 
But at the same point, I was into this battery stuff. That's because I was trying to get back into the nuclear industry. That's what regenerated all my interest in this. Because I started there, then went out into the legal world. I was an engineer and a lawyer. And then <clears throat> suddenly construction of nuclear power plants is back on the boards right before the Fukushima thing messed everything up. But still, two got built in Georgia, and they're building them around the world, and maybe some more domestic stuff will happen, but I'm retired now. But at the time, I wanted to get back in that. So I um, got interested in all this stuff. Like, what is an electron? Anyway, I forgot after, be, after all those legal beefs. Long story. S one of the better papers says the electron might be squeezed out. But at some point, the energy is too low for that, and the electron appears anyway. See? The, e the EAQ we're talking about is not from, quote, excitement, unquote. Or, or, quote, CTTS, charge transfer to solvent. Not from that, see? I spent, like, months on each one of those words. But, quote, I love this one, too. Something other than excitation, unquote. What could it be, Mr. Feynman? Nice drawings, by the way. Pardon me, I need a sip. It could be low energy, that's what it is. Low energy pair production in water. Also known as artificial lightning. Or with a cool little thing, EAQ. Wouldn't that look good on a building in neon? EAQ. It's the EAQ building. But it was something other than excitation. Here's another one. They're always spherical, too. Not complex orbitals that look like balloon animals, which is another happy coincidence. The best explanation involves overlapping hydrogen orbitals that feels, in quote, the extra charge. That feels, that feels came from, I still love it so much, from a national laboratory. They're like, well, if it isn't, if it isn't Feynman, it's, it just feels the charge, which I think it's true. I can't think of a better way to say it. But like I say in the next sentence, they even put feels in quotes. It's so precious. It's adorable. Mm. Imagine these hardcore scientists saying, getting the feels about this thing. But these papers are done by experimentalists, not theorists. So they don't have to explain everything. They can get away with it. I'm not mocking here, just laughing at myself, trying to understand this. Oh, I bang my head against the wall. Also, these experiments are often very general in nature. They do as much as possible, then move on to the next thing. It's like you find this, the best energy thing in the world. It's like, okay, the grant money's running out, folks. We've got to do this thing about ice on the space shuttle next with laser beams and stuff. You know, they're like, yeah, okay, what time's lunch? Uh, yeah. It's not like they focused on low energy, the, yes. It's not like they focused on the low energy excess electron here either. It's only an oddball detail and loose end among a zillion other things they had to consider. What I've described, the useful and interesting part, pardon me, hot air coming up, is buried under tons of mundane ionization stuff, which is important too, of course. There might be four paragraphs and 60 more of other mind-numbing gibberish, one or two sentences here and there are readable in these papers. It's not a narrative story like I'm telling you. See, that's my added value, right? Because they have it, they just... They don't know it, and they didn't. They can't even tell it this well, or no one has. So, pat my own back here. That's what I'm doing here. I was curious. If you are now, I'm telling you about this. It's not that quote. This happens, 
after the other thing, it's all out of order. Dark violet, it's all out of, meaning their paper, it's, it's, you know, the typical science paper. It's in there, it doesn't jump out at you, though. <laughs> Here's why. Like I said, I'm an engineer, I can understand this stuff, but I gotta dig, 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 dig. Dark violet is 3.0 EV to these people. These are scientists from Argonne Lab. They don't even think in nanometers like normal people. The point is, even after you've digested all of this, they don't come out and say it clearly that they're making new electrons. I have to wonder if there was timidity or company politics or what is... Why that didn't... Uh, uh, why that didn't register. Or maybe I'm, I'm the one that's out of order here. I don't know. I don't think so. This is a big distinction from what's done in current generation, solar and battery technology, which only pushes, pulls, or stores existing electrons. According to my notes here, I'm supposed to read this twice. This is a big distinction from what is done in current generation. Solar and battery technology, which I was deep into by now, which only pushes, pulls, or stores existing electrons. These are new electrons. These are human beings making new ones on demand when needed. It can be done. I don't, no one's ever... It's not done, but I'm saying here it's possible. And later on, I'll tell you why it might be, you know, highly feasible in graphene to start. Graphene water battery. What we have here are big, odd-sized electrons, which are made from visible light, which are trapped and stored until released, when suddenly they shrink to normal size and move very quickly to the conduction band with other electrons, or else they decay with flashes of unraveling white and blues. I'm supposed to read that twice, but I'm not going to, because I think I repeated that enough. Uh, this can be done 10 to the 15 million, 10 to the 15th, a quadrillion, 15 zeros times per second in very dense water. Okay. Energy density. <clears throat> <clears throat> this gives us unprecedented energy storage. See why I was beating my head against the wall? Plus generation, plus density. That should come in handy. This, imagine this on a spaceship. You have, a, you know, your solar power thing out there. Oh, we're... Somehow we're leaking electrons. Well, it's a, don't worry about it. Kick on the other thing and it'll make a new one out of water. I mean, you have light, water, suddenly electricity, and sudden visible flashes. What does that tell you? It took me a while to see that. I had been looking for something else. And what's missing, missing here implies lightning, too. Ever hear of a weather forecast for proton showers? On Channel 4 Action News with Sally Wigan? I don't think so. But we don't care anyway. It's a good thing. All right, thanks for listening to that. I know that was brutal. Read it. Listen to it twice as fast. Don't look at the screen. Do what you have to do, but just listen to the words I am telling you in there. And I'll back it up in a minute. I'm going to pause now before I skip on to the images and take a sip and maybe stand up. So we'll see you in a second. Control pause. Okay, we're gonna keep rolling here. I don't wanna to get too comfortable resting or pausing or anything like that. And it's taken, taken too long to get to this. <clears throat> so now we're on the third section of this, 
which is called images, which all this is. We're going to go over a, a page full of little images and diagrams and memes and things like that to try to convince people to take me seriously. <laughs> Good luck. So, <clears throat> that's why they are goofy cartoons, some of them, and also some of them, some of them turned out to be, that, that one was not right. But I left it there anyway for history's sake. That one is right. That is very right. And that is a nice, simple diagram. I love it. It's step by step. One, two, three, four. Stuff like that. All right, this first image. Uh, early on Twitter to try to put something out there to catch, capture the attention of well, I was in the circle of the Breakthrough Energy Group. I used to go to their meetings down at Carnegie Mellon. And you'd be surprised how small they are. And you'd be surprised how of eight of us around the table or whatever, including the guys giving it, how many are billionaires now that weren't before, including some that... Uh, <laughs> anecdote time. I used to work at this old steel mill in West, uh, we're in West Virginia. I mean, talk about the end of the industrial age. Uh, that was it, uh, Charles Dickens, Dickensian. Well, it finally shut down, went out of business, and, uh, you know, you'd think, wow, nothing's ever going to arise there. I mean, that's, they'll find dinosaur bones, they'll find that thing. Uh, you know, America's out of the steel business, whatever you want to put on it, you know. And we're in not a garden spot in the first place either. It's a mill town. So it's kind of depressing. But years later, decades, one of these guys around the uh, conference table is now building a battery plant down there. He got money from Bill Gates. I think this plant's going in for $800 million there. They're out of Boston. They're called Form Energy. I'll just name them. And they have a battery, not as good as mine, but feasible today buildable today, understood by everybody today. And it's just a positive thing for industrial America, which I came out of. So, where was I? So I'd make these little gimmicks here, even before I met those guys, um, to, uh, to try to sell this idea. And this shows a, well, what is it? Doesn't even say artificial lightning, I didn't think of it yet. But it shows photons coming from the sun, going into this classical picture of the EAQ. There it is, there's a couple dimensions, you see the little water molecules. See this big thing here, way bigger than it should be? That is a trapped EAQ, just like we've been talking about. Uh, this is a little graph here that tells you what, uh, I think that's bigger versions somewhere in my uh, stuff, you'll find it. And it shows the uh, blue-green is preferred, and it falls apart at the red, and all that, you know, that stuff. And then this is the Feynman diagram right here. Let me just check myself over here and make sure I'm on... Yeah, so you can kind of see my uh, cursor there, which is good. And again, look at all. Look at this stuff at your leisure. This is a, a rough video trying to get the general idea across. Now, this later diagram, which of these are slightly out of order because I made made some that were wrong before this, but I wanted this to come up on the web page second, I guess. This gives you a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points. Tells you the steps. Gives you dimensions. And they're pretty, the dimensions are pretty close, too. If I recall here. Your angstroms. Well, the, the photons are way too small. Because they'd be thousands of times larger than your screen. Okay, what you're looking at there, imagine a thing thousands of times, thousands of times larger than your screen. You know, seven house lengths, whatever it is. From here to the whatever. Coming into your screen, getting wrapped around each other in, in, well, let's just read the steps instead of having me yell at you. Step one, what is the EAQ? One, photons enter the water cluster, visible in ultraviolet. 
Step two, photons enter hydrogen causing larger 3s spherical orbitals. That took a while to figure out. 3s spherical orbitals. 3, 3s hydrogen orbitals overlap because these, mole these water molecules share hydrogens and they change them, you know, every uh, something second, constantly, fast, fast, a thousand times a second in ice, that's all I remember, probably a hundred thousand in water, I don't know, and so they're overlapping, and they're sharing and stuff like that, that. and so if you have an extra photon stuck in there, and you're sharing with another one, they're all flying around together, they wrap up, they wrap around each other, the photons wrap around each other, they're the same size, and they create a new electron. Just like Feynman says happens with the little, the little gammas. Same deal, only big. And the photochemists found it, not the uh, physicists. I, you know, well, there's a little dispute for later, maybe. So, so the, the orbitals overlap. Four, photons merge, generate a new a EAQ. And there's little drawings there, you know. There's an arrow. Oh, okay, that's the gray area. Set, no, no. After four is five. Where's five? Five. Large spherical, low energy EAQ ejected shrinks and moves to conduction band hole or maybe removed for use. Six. Occurrence may be replicated. 10 to the 15 power times per second. In other words, it's very fast. It's very dense. It's using free energy. It's using a free energy, free thing. Water's pretty much free. But you have to set it all up. You have to set it up. And you can start with graphene, maybe. You know, that, that looks promising. Like it does for everything, doesn't it? So for six, we read six. Or seven may be stored indefinitely. Now, how would you do that? Well, we know it's doable because we see bright white light blasting out of the sky at 3 a.m. So those electrons were formed by the sun. They're in there floating in the cloud and they decide to come out then. But the bright ones we see are the light those are the bad, those are the ones that didn't make it. They were too red, so they fly apart. But somebody's barn just got hit by real electrodes, elect electrons on their lightning uh, rod. And that happens, and we know that happens. Anyone want to dispute that? Anyone want to tell me where the protons went in that case? The ether, you saw, oh, well, yeah. Yeah, the vacuum, they went into the, yeah, yeah, they went there. Yeah, sure they did. Well, I don't know, maybe they, you know, maybe they did, okay? Maybe, maybe I'm missing something here, but it doesn't look like it to me. That's why I'm out here. Or maybe stored indefinitely, okay? There, there, there will be a way, believe me, once they figure out, first, that this is right. Second, that it can be, they're on a semi-path I'm hoping to put them on that it can be engineered, you know, then, then the real die-hard scientists kick in, okay? I'm just a big picture guy here. Uh, because that's all I can do. The next diagram is another sort of a sales pitch. For the person that knows about physics but doesn't know about this, so I tried to lure them in with pair production on this thing. And they see Feynman here. And I'm saying, okay, it's just like Feynman. In that little picture there, it's just like when you shoot a gamma ray at a nucleus, the right kind of nucleus. You get an electron out. Now Feynman would say, well, you get a positron. It's, a, it's antimatter. You know what? I kind of don't like the notion of antiparticles. But I don't care right now about that. You know, that's, to me... Some, we can argue about that later. It doesn't That's irrelevant to the, what I'm trying to do here. So I figure they see this, and I put my little diagram there with water and hydrogen in it, and it's a little process, and 
why couldn't it be, you know, I don't know. It was a, oh, yeah, and look at this. I like this. Or you can do it over here. Yeah, right. Here's the sales pitch. Sure, you can do pair production over here with Brand X in this gigantic, uh, highly expensive, that's why all the dollar signs, highly prohibitive, dangerous, what you may call it, particle accelerator. And there's the little particle accelerator, see? Yeah, I, I remember making this. When was this? Probably 2017, I guess. This is 24 now. Anyway, so you put these together, and if, you, if you're interested in it, and keep staring at these things, they'll, you, you might get drawn in, you might understand it. Whatever. It's there. So, let me take a sip now. I have to read a little bit on this one. Now, on this next little image, I tell a little poetic story, don't I? Oh, is this cute? Yeah, a little sales pitch. Yeah, I wrote this up for the angel.com. I guess, yeah, I'm like, wow, this will be a startup. I'll make speeches and people know what the hell I'm talking about. You got to give it a shot, right? So I put it on this startup blog thing, which they took the blogs down. Thanks a lot with not telling us. And that's all right. I started putting them on my web page by then. Uh, that's another story. And uh, so there now it's all fine. But um, they were up there on the Angel blog. So I made this little thing. Uh, a little. A little story. The, e, the EAQ. Recipe for four to six. Because I'm thinking, well, how do you make them, really? I mean... Clear a spot on the kitchen counter. Find a mixing bowl. Stir in H2O molecules in a cluster of four to six. Yeah. I was trying to get specific. Stimulate electromagnetically to align. Let sit for one femtosecond. Add two readily obtainable, easily manipulated photons. Solar will do fine. Stuff from the sun. Free energy. So will stored, energized hydrogen. And that's some other side scheme, I guess. Shake. Let's sit for 1 to 10 femtoseconds. That's real numbers. Maybe 40. I guess that comes out of the paper. Something around there to taste. Stimulate electromagnetically again to configure. Let's sit again. Yeah. Well, it's, I'm not sure that's right, but you got to make it happen. you got to set it up and make it happen. It happens naturally in the sun. It can happen artificially for us. But it's going to take a little effort. Then once you know how to do it, you know, you know how to do it now. It's easy. Let's sit for another few femtoseconds. I guess I was really reading that, <laughs> those steps. Now you've generated a fresh new electron made from those photons. It's called the EAQ, the excess aqueous electron. Stimulate electromagnetically one last time to eject, unless it doesn't go on its own. Repeat and serve with garnish as needed. Uh, okay, postscript. Now imagine very roughly. 6 to the O2 times 10 to the 23rd, I guess that's a mole, an important number for some reason, in, of such clusters in, say, four fluid ounces. Oh, that's why it's important. Four shot glasses. Probably less. They're each producing 10 to the 15 electrons per second. A million billion, roughly, more or less. Give or take a quadrillion, th you know, on the side of... Go ahead and do the math. Is this a project worth pursuing? Essay question. Extra bonus. Why the hell would you not? Because it's um, energy density. Fresh electrons. Now what those numbers mean, they do add up, but I forget what they add up to. 
be honest with you. Um, you know, that's going to take a little more, a little more pencil sharpening. But it's a lot more juice. I mean, you look at lightning. Just look at it. Okay, just, just look at it. That happens randomly and haphazardly. I'm, you know, it's, it's amazing it even happens at all. Because things have to align so perfectly. But it does, commonly. So what if you put a little effort into it? And you see all that energy coming out. That's just one shot. That's one. That's one, one bolt. I'm talking about a million billion per second, roughly, more or less. Anyway, you can see why I'm, uh, why I was so <laughs> fired up about this. And again, this was before the other thing. Not these little images. They were in parallel for a while, but I went through all this research on this thing. Then saw the balloon go up the ray of sunlight just for to set the record straight now here's another little cartoon uh, i guess this is just to get people's interest bill gates's money guy what is he gonna think if he looks at this what is the eaq probably who cares but if you looked at it it looks to me like this guy thinks he's got some way to use to duplicate a lightning. Yeah, that's it. Oh, and there's Ben Franklin, and there's Tesla, inspired by lightning. And let's look at our, what's this again? Oh, yeah, there's the Westinghouse building with lightning in front of it, where my parents met. Coincidence? I don't know. Anyway, there's Tesla again. Someday we'll talk about the uh, bar across the street in New York City we used to go to. Uh, now it's gentrified. Anyway, it was across from his old lab. And they had pictures of him in there and stuff. And he used to go in there back in the old days. Anyway, but it all happened in the Berg, folks. All that electricity. Yeah, they talk about Edison and Tesla and whatchamacallit, Chase. But it got done down here in the Berg by Tesla and Westinghouse, as most of you know. And my dad was an electrical engineer, that earned, and he had the same degree as me, industrial. But he worked as an electrical account executive selling these things that transform AC to DC. I mean, he had stacks of manuals, hey, whatever kind you need, he had. And other stuff for them, for industry, he did that. Anyway, rest in peace, this is his birthday. Rest in peace, he'd be 97. But he passed away, I guess, four years ago. Years ago, uh, three plus. Anyway, so here we are again, back here, with Tesla, Franklin. All right, so they went the way of this... The steam, you know, we know how that innovation went. With the water, with the heat, heating water to spin the turbine with the magnets to generate, to push the electrons. But these guys were inspired by lightning, weren't they? I mean, hey, what we have now works pretty good. But uh, <clears throat> why stop there? Did we go down this path of lightning itself? Other than harnessing lightning you'll see some ideas about that but that's that's chasing cats that someone else is hurting good luck but we never really thought about du you know duplicating it as much as we should have in my opinion and i stumbled on this and i think and i found the paper and i think it's right and etc and that's what i'm out here pushing today so here's your option. The old way, brand X, boiling water and all that stuff, which is good. Or the new way with this light diagram here, the sun, some water, or this, well, here, we have a cloud. Here's our duplicate cloud. That only took 10 minutes to figure out. This is our artificial cloud. 
Maybe I should have called it that. Anyway, we get it onto the grid. Everyone's happy. But it's like I said, it's also a rechargeable portable battery, ideally, and solar panel, right? Does all that. Could. Could do all that. Here's a sales pitch that looks good. What is it? Ooh. Walk into the conference and that's on the wall. Wow. All right. This is a diagram of extreme detail, if I recall. It's got a lot of numbers on it for you guys. Fun facts, specific densities. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Comparing this to these lithium-ion batteries. <laughs> I'll put you out of business. No, it's just comparing them. I don't know if it'll, what will happen. Specific density of water. I guess I figured this out at some point. I figured out watt hours per kilogram. I remember doing it. Don't ask me to do it now. <laughs> but it's written down, believe me. <laughs> um... And it might be off slightly, but it's it's showing you that this thing is 180 or 18 times better, 19 times off the bat, without even really tinkering with it. This is doing shot glass math here, compared to your best lithium-ion battery, which can't recharge itself. Okay? Now, specific power is goes to infinity on this. What that means now, I forgot. I think it means it recharges itself. Versus lithium ion brand X. Still using lithium ion. Recharge time here. I've got oh uh, one femtosecond. <laughs> That's pretty fast. Versus well, it's in the femtoseconds. I guess it it depends on how big your battery is, how it's shaped. Versus minutes with lithium-ion, plus you have to recharge it. I'm making new electrons. I'm just calling it recharge, so you'll understand it. Now here, here's the chart. Sometimes I crack myself up. I'm like looking at this chart. I'm trying to learn all this stuff. And I figured out, well, you know what? It's off this chart. So it's off the chart, literally. Now over here, what else did I say? couple of jokes on here. Need gigawatts quickly? Try us. And then some sales pitch. I even ap appeal to the green crowd in a moment here. The bottomless water battery recharges with light quicker than you can use it. True. Always full. Hmm. How would that be? Powered by the EAQ, excess aqueous electron technology, nature's best solution. It's solar, it's sustainable, it's green, it's clean. Generation and storage all in one. In H2O, clusters of, here's a little explainer. In H2O, clusters of four to six certain wavelengths of water clusters, four to six molecules, certain wavelengths form electrons. We are going to optimize this reaction. Ast astronomical numbers of new electrons each femtosecond. Atomic bomb-like energy, efficiency, repeatedly. Recharges with light, not electrons. New electrons are created from light. Now here's the sun there, you know. Well, what if it's night out, Kelly? What, what if you're away from the sun? Well, you can, you can adjust the uh, solar panel, your thing that captures, say you're out in outer, outer space, there's nothing out there but terahertz and just the dim light of stars. But you've got chock full of cold terahertz. You grab your terahertz. You depolarize it in the metamaterial with your absorber. Then you chiralize it if you must. Then you bump it up and down, bump the wavelength up and down. See these cheap, uh, what do you call it, uh, dollar store, dollar tree glasses? They're bending light. They're changing the wavelengths. All right? So can this stuff. So can metamaterials. They'll do it right down to the sub-nanometer picosecond. So you make it do that if you're out there in outer space or if it's dark. 
Say it's dark here on Earth. My, my never-emptying battery is full anyway. It's four shot glasses, powers this house and the whole block for two years, I don't know. And, uh, but I need a recharge, you know, because I'm one of those people that needs to you know, recharge the phone, and when it's down to 99%, I'm not like that, but, you know, no one likes to see that go down too low. Anyway, so you're like that, and you want to do it at light, at night. So you use the cold temperatures outside, like right now, it's snowing and 30-something. So the absorber... You know, it senses it, and then it adjusts, and then it and it absorbs the cold, changes it into UV, violet, 3.0, whatever the, whatever you want. Again, using technology, like a Dollar Tree glasses, only better. You know. So that's what we do with that. Where are we? Okay, here's a little picture of hydrogen absorbing light. Gratuitous, but looks sciencey or something. And then here's a lightning bolt. Okay, no, no, this this is a little diagram here on what it would look like. A little device, light going into the hydrogen. You pump the hydrogen. That's right. That was the original setup. You pump the hydrogen f through the water, which may be, you know, the better way to do it. I don't know. I kind of don't think so now, but I don't. I wouldn't. I'm not making a decision on on that today. I don't know why I thought that though. I forget. Um, why would that be better? Um, anyway, so let's go down to this atom. Why is it there? Oh, that shows you that hydrogen, how hydrogen absorbs stuff from the sun. Look, it absorbs red, if you can see that, which you can't. It absorbs cyan, it absorbs, which is bluish green, swimming pool color, and it absorbs violet. And then this other stuff we can't see above it. Ultraviolet and down below red in infrared heat. Heatish. And then, then what happens? The light, okay. The light can be delivered directly or by energized hydrogen as shown. Okay, right. And that was on that blog, too, according to this, which was unceremoniously removed. But I rewrote the same thing, put it on LinkedIn, put it on somewhere else, start doing my own web pages, which I should have done in the first place. But anyways, always save your work, folks. <laughs> I had two blogs over there, and uh, one of them got saved on uh, the archive, one didn't. And I was a little angry about that for a while, but I got over it. Now, here's another new sales pitch. This goes, does this go back to the Obama years and Solyndra? The idea does. Um, anyway, and he, I guess he was still president when I made this. I don't know, no, but, but the uh, green, green um, ideology is still with us. I don't like it. I don't like climate change stuff. I don't like it. I like efficiency, which gets rid of all that, which is going to happen anyway. But if you think you want to block roads, you know, oh, God. Renewable energy breakthrough. I love this picture of this cloud because this is what inspired me. These clouds, you can see water, you can see light electrons forming in there. And if a red balloon comes along from under that cloud where the shadow is into that sunlight, boom, it's going right up there. And that's your light-matter interaction, which we've discussed plenty of times on other, other videos. Please like, share, subscribe. Renewable energy breakthrough, artificial lightning, excess aqueous electron, the EAQ. Light forms in new electrons in water. Far better than ordinary solar. Approximately 10 to the million billion new electrons per second per cluster. That's four, four, what do you call it? Four molecules getting a billion trillion new electrons per second. Now, how many clusters can you fit in a shot glass? I don't know. 
what, what do I get for this much? But you have to put it in the meta, meta material and that. It's not that easy. But once you learn how to do it, 3D printed, free energy. Don't ask me when, but it's coming. It's coming one way or the other. Far better than ordinary brand X. <clears throat> it's not a passive hole in a circuit, but an active generation and storage material. This is why this is the new solar, the better solar. The permanent solar, maybe. Well, uh, it's, it's like solar, but better. What can I tell you? I think, you know, solar was very popular then. It still is, but, and I had to learn what it was and what the difference was and all this stuff and all that and this. And then, uh, you know, I remember being, feeling guilty about putting that on there, but it's not a passive hole in a circuit, but an active generation and storage material. In other words, here's me, nobody, trying to go up against these billion dollar, you know, solar, they invested so much in it and all, you know, it's the, it's the current thing, it's cool, whatever, you know. But over here, quietly, is a quiet cloud doing far more than, than all the uh, giants of the industry. Okay, we move on now with this little... Oh, yeah, let's talk about Dave DeCello here because we use his images. And they help, they inspire on this. And when it comes time to uh, talk about it, you want to inspire people. Uh, yeah, this is a close-up of the, of the thumbnail. This is lightning hitting, hitting the water uh, in front of the Westinghouse building. I mentioned three times now. And the EAQ written on there to impress people. Because, like I said, that's once. Imagine that a billion, tri a, what is it, a billion, million times a second? Yeah. That's enough electricity to keep those uh, lights on in that city for a long time. Like always, you can make a constant flow of this stuff. Be a lot easier, ultimately. All right, these next four images are older, and each has been superseded but somewhat by the images above. But nonetheless, they may be helpful in understanding the concept. This is me going through the building blocks, building up to that... Uh, seven step thing I finally got to when I finally figured it all out together and I kind of like these little drawings anyway like for example this one's still right it's just a little it might be a little uh... no that's that's fine this one what is this oh this is if you look at photons like I do and well, it came out this year, and some scientific papers are saying, we think the uh, electron may look like a, a yin-yang. Well, yeah, of course it does. A photon looks like a half a yin-yang. Look at my web pages. You'll find a bunch of uh, made-up animations I did that show that. Far before this new breakthrough, here's a photograph of something and anyway, that's when I once I figured out that's what they have to look like. You start thinking of them that way. You add them this way and sideways. I even forgot about the infinity symbols. This way or a figure eight. This way and this way. Add them together. You got this way, like that thing there, and like any electron. But it's you got to visualize it for yourself and do it your way. Now, this is wrong, I believe. This is completely wrong until I figured out. I thought it was happening in the oxygen's inner ring of uh, electrons, inner shell. I figured, well, the light gets in. <clears throat> the ex excess photons come in through the hydrogens and somehow get in there and mix it up in there because that would be a good blending mixer. But I don't think you need that effort. You don't. You just do it in the uh, overlapping hydrogens. 
right? Really easy. Happens by itself, naturally. This is deprecated. That's from 2013. Yeah, so I made that back in Georgia, right after I came up with this. Um, <clears throat> since then, I moved back home to Pittsburgh, PA, after my parents passed away, and I moved into their place. I helped them in their later years. But I came up with this stuff back down in Georgia, and I got a lot of the papers out of Georgia Tech. So, stacks of them. Including the one, the fine, the big one. I guess we'll get to, but we'll get to it, but that's, I'm just going to give you the link. <laughs> you can go over it yourself. You want to go over it in my numbing detail sometime? Huh. Bring it on. Just give me some warning. And uh, these next items, I don't know what these are. Oh, this tells people to go look at Twitter. Uh, this is that <clears throat> seven step thing. This might be an earlier version. Where's the seventh step? <laughs> I don't know. I took it off. Oh, okay. This is the generating mode, not the battery mode. That's what that is. And this shows the, this shows graphene overlaying it. <clears throat> because after a while, I learned that, uh, <clears throat> pardon me. Not only I learned it, it was a new development that they found that water <clears throat> in certain types of graphene sheets will act like a <clears throat> glassy ice. It'll freeze-ish, mostly. And that's what you want for this. So that's just uh, overlaying the things and me trying to visualize how these gigantic water molecules cluster on the things but uh, <clears throat> that's too much detail for here and frankly I don't know right now how you know how do they interact like that I guess they I guess these hydrogens get pinned on on the loose carbons loose yeah at the points maybe I don't know have to look into that again <clears throat> again that happened <clears throat> fairly recently and then some gratuitous lightning uh, videos. Uh, and then what happened? All right, we're done with the uh, images. That's it. That's a, one more version of it. I think this one, one of these is a, an animated GIF that blinks like lightning or something. <clears throat> but that's, that's the images. We're done with that. So I am going to pause because my voice is getting a little funny. And we'll be right back. I'm not going to walk away too far because I want to get this done. I'm on a roll. It's rough, but it's a roll. And we'll be back with the moments and last words. All right, folks, we're back. I made myself bigger on the picture for some reason unknown to me change it up a little bit this is dry stuff but just imagine if it's <clears throat> well where it could go so what we're going to do now is four twitter moments or as they are now known x events and all this is is a series of tweets linked below four separate links and um uh, I can't make these anymore because I'm not a professional creator, but in the old days you could make these things, no matter who you were. And so I made these, and we're going to go over them. They're not long. You're, if you've made it this far, you've made it most of the way, I congratulate you. This is dry. Uh, <laughs> but it has a lot of promise if it's right. So we're going to go over these moments now. And... Uh, talk about them. They're short. So, these are four moments, Twitter moments. I still call them moments. And I still call it Twitter for now. Uh, <clears throat> although it's really called X, which is way better. 
But back then, these were my sacred Twitter moments. And fortunately, I can still use them. I can't edit them or make new ones. Unless I become a professional account, which I'm not. That's for real creators, professionals. So, this first one is called Harnessing, Harvesting, and Creating Artificial Lightning Photochemically. Now, these harnessing and harvesting words are clickbait, or they're search terms. Because people look for that. They're interested in that. They think it can be harnessed or harvested. Look, you'll find 10,000 million search results. Uh, but I'm selling artificial. So I lure them in with that and then tell them it's artificial, creating it. So, all right, that's a little sleazy. But you really are. You could say you're harnessing and harvesting lightning, but it's artificial in this case. And we uh, use the Dave DeSolo photo again. It's great. So, our first tweet, physics.org, a laser triggers electroactivity in thunderstorms. Whatever it is, it's somehow relevant. So, um, uh, I guess I, the next tweet is me. I'm, I'm not answering it. Uh, maybe I am. It's relevant. It's in order, logical order here of some sort. And I say, the unexplored, untapped potential of this phenomena is unfathomable, in my opinion. The black swan energy storage, generation process, and materials are staring us in the face, booming and flashing for attention. That links to my old, ancient LinkedIn article. So I'm trying to get people to read this stuff. Back when, this was uh, January, that's almost four years ago. So, you can go read that. What I've told you today is more up to date. Then I go on and say, statements like this make my brain hurt. I guess, I don't know, I'm, I'm not going to go into my I mean, detail what I'm answering and all that. I don't know. Quote, lightning strikes have been the subject of scientific investigation dating back to the times of Benjamin Franklin. But despite this, remain not fully understood. Unquote. And I say, especially the word fully, may I suggest barely, because I know about the secret. It's not a secret, it's just buried. The Argon paper, they know about it better than they think they know about it. So does everybody else. It's just not out there. And, no, you know, well known. But it's there, we'll get to it. And then I say, more starting here. Here's a bunch of sales pitches, little images we just went over. If I can get people to look at those, maybe something will get their attention. They can. Um, <clears throat> here's a link to that speech page. That's why that's there. Which is also below, and you just heard about it before. So here's another little tweet about structure. Of, uh, yeah, all right. Structure of water confined between two parallel graphene plates. Now, this, this is when it first became known, four years already, that the glassy ice could be achieved with graphene plates. So, how's that done, Kelly? Well, dig into this link here. I can't remember, but it's there. So, that's where we start. Something like that. The next tweet says, a 90 nanometer thick graphene metamaterial for absorbing strong and extremely broadband absorption of unpolarized light. So you put this layer on top of it, the other thing we just mentioned. You put the absorber on top of the thing that's confining the water between two parallel graphene plates. And what do you know, this is graphene too. So, that's good. So that's how you start stacking and building cells or whatnot. Building a thing like I was just yelling about a moment ago. I remembered that part, right? And, and then uh, here's an article from Physics Today. Electrons and graphene follow viscous fluid laws. That has something to do with something. That means when you make a new electron, it's going gonna, it's gonna to move through the graphene. That's what kind of well-known to this crowd, to my audience, as of now. 
and uh, it's only this stuff's only going to get more and more well known because it's new. And then I guess this is supposed to be funny. I call it sort of obtainium soon maybeism. Yeah. Sales pitch. There's the fling. There's the flashing lightning bolt, creating all that energy, billion trillion times a second. Don't look at it if you're. Flashing things make you nauseous. It's not that bad, but it might be. So there's that. Now here, here we go. Here's the... Some of you have been waiting for me to get to this, probably. And it's linked below, so you should... Read the descriptions in these things, folks. <clears throat> and you won't have to wait around to get to the part you like. And, of course, I link this one more time. Link that... Um, Argon Lab paper. Let's just look at it and open it up just for a second here. See where does it go. I'm going to go off on a little sidetrack here, but here's our article here. There's a paragraph that doesn't tell you exactly what, <clears throat> what I just said, but it's in this article. This is the summary, which as far as I'm concerned, you know, it says, well, we did all this and that, and... To my eyes, it says most of it's <clears throat> interesting, but not uh, practical in what I'm looking for. But four paragraphs of it are gold. Gold. Better than gold. <clears throat> and this is, well, let's look at it. It's by Robert A. Crow and David M. Bartels of the, well, let's get our, This is going to tell you you have to pay for it, okay? Access options. Uh, purchase access. Because unless you're in an institution or you have an ID for the journal, you know, you're in the club. You know, it's a professional group. Physical chemistry. The Journal of the American Physical... American Chemical Society. So you can buy this for a low, low price of $48. And, you know... Yeah, Hey, but this is the one you want to buy. Um, you can get them free, and I'm going to tell you a little amusing anecdote. This one I would have paid for, but this was number 100 or something of more. Hundreds of papers I looked through looking for this, for the gold. I found bits and pieces on other ones, but this is the gold. And how do you, but do you want to pay, uh, you know, $4,800 or whatever that would be? Uh, I don't know. It's a lot of money because a lot of these uh, papers, you you just click on it and you pay, you pay for it, you buy it, and it doesn't say what you hoped it did, or it's not useful at all, or it doesn't match the description of the title of it, or the abstract of it, or something. Um, I was doing this on a budget uh, called free, freeness, free and unpaid for this. So when you do that, you have to be a bit more clever. So how do you get a free ACS publication? Most cited, most trusted, most read. Well, what you do is, depending on where you live, I was living in Georgia at the time, and uh, I saw that, well, these institutions can get them. And I don't know how, uh, how, how did I figure this out? I know I didn't get the idea from anyone else. I I well, what I did... Uh, I started crashing colleges, and I, uh, I would go to um, Georgia Tech. You go to the library. You go to the free terminals in the uh, library where Dad goes to check his email while visiting the kids or whatnot. And, you know, visitors, you get one hour or something. You don't have to be in the school. You don't have to be anything. You just have to go to the front desk. Give them a driver's license or something. Easy. Pay for parking, probably, down there, especially. And, um, well, you, send, you, you get a list of your articles. You send yourself an email. You go down there, you have one hour. You open your email with 40 links, right, to papers. You click, 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 print, 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 print. And because you're in the college, that's an engineering school, that has all this stuff, 
Not every college has this. That one has, has anything technical, as you know. So, and you pay for the printing. Penny a page, what is it, five cents, I don't know. So you walk out of there for 80 bucks with $4,800 worth of stuff, something like that. So there's your tip for the day, off topic. But this is your golden article here. If you think I'm full of hot air, read this article. Now, unless you're really schooled in this stuff, it's going to take a bit of parsing for you. I gave you the key words and all that stuff. And you can put it together yourself. Um, or you can read my speech page here. Because down below, I think I took most of it out, but I have, uh, yeah, I took it out of this. I have markups of that paper that uh, go into the space-time black hole of rabbit holes that show, well, there's arguments. Imagine arguing in your head about this stuff for years, okay? And then trying to explain it. That could be redone. I wrote it down, so whatever. I can make it easier for you. If it doesn't jump out, things don't jump out, which they don't. But it's in there. If you're really interested, and you know the key buzzwords, and you think you want to know this, take a look at that. Go to your college, get a freebie, or uh, pay the 48 bucks. And now we have a couple of corny tweets. Oh, these excellent tweets by Dave DeCello. I showed them before. I won't waste your time now. You can look at them again. They're great, but you don't need to see them again. Now, the second moment. I called it low energy pair production. That maybe some physicist will see it and say, that's impossible. Well, is it? No, it isn't. So I taunt them on, on uh, Twitter and try to get their attention using these things. And I make a few arguments here. Like, using, according to this widely ignored paper and others, neither a co-lighter or gamma energies are required for this phenomenon. Because people love pair production. It's got colliders. It's got high energies. It's got Feynman diagrams. Oh, it's so cool. So when you see somebody talking about it, you go online and you, print, you post a tweet to that and say, Psst, visible and UV light in glassy water will do the same thing. And then run and hide and then show them a picture of, of lightning and see if they go for it. But then you have to say, well, you have to read my speech or you can look at this paper and do it yourself. <laughs> a lot of work. Anyway, and next tweet says, preoccupied with this topic for years, I thought of it as low energy pair production, for lack of a better term, then realized it's probably something we see all the time. Lightning. I was sitting in the car, headed home from skating, about to make a left on North no, Windward Parkway, and I was a storm there, and I'm like, boy, I'm glad I missed that storm. Now I'll get back to the rabbit hole, now that I'm all exhausted from skating, and my head's cleared. And then I, then I thought, you know what I've been chasing? I've been chasing lightning. By the way, artificial lightning sounds better than lightning in a bottle, right? <laughs> right, tinfoil hats? You're with me, right? Anyway, but that's Go ahead, look at that paper. Don't argue with me, argue with our gone labs. Because I'll set it up for you. And you'll lose. Preoccupied with that. Yeah, lightning. Synapses in your brain snap. The basic step-by-step -step is shown on this amateurish drawing below. That's when I was trying to get the attention of these uh, big shots in our gone lab, which I did. Went a little while, but they got back to the batteries. Anyway, because it was the battery department I got in with. I'm like, well, you know, you, you're 
stuck on the old cathodes and anodes and I mean they're good. you have to have them you have to have them right now you're not going to jump into this tomorrow and this guy's in charge of all development of all the federal government of all the batteries and he god bless him he gave me the time of day we kicked it around for a little while and he's like look I got a deadline over here you know he could have given me the tin foil hat blow off but he didn't because fortunately the the best paper is from his own lab don't believe me? Go downstairs and ask Charles Bartell or who are they? Robert A. Crow and Tr David M. Bartels. Oh well, who probably forgot it? It was '96. Oh, uh, where was I? Okay, I was over here yelling and screaming. Okay, and then I repeat myself. You heard that part. You heard that part. You heard that part. Now I'm over here with this guy. This is the guy I was just talking about. See, I put these in order. Good. The late George Crabtree, who was a nice guy, he passed away. I corresponded with him and met him in person and all that, but it, you know, the form energies and Bill Gates come along, man, kind of pushes me aside. But I, he didn't push me aside. He was nice. I got as far as I could get. I was lucky to get that far. The best hard information comes from Argonne itself. So yeah, he followed me and followed, they followed me back and I followed them. They're like, oh yeah, it's that guy in Pittsburgh. Yeah, this is so I'm sad. So I write them a few tweets. I didn't beat them to death with it. Occasionally repeated what I already repeated. And I said to them on this tweet, The transformative material you seek may well be simple water, which as glassy ice can generate new electrons from viz and UV, visible and ultraviolet, low energy pair production, and store them indefinitely. See, he doesn't know. He's not a physicist. So pair production, he's like, what's that? Well, huh? As you'd expect. The best information comes from Argonne, I hope I'm saying that right, itself, along with some of the confirming speculative theory. In other words, they're the ones saying packets and waves and electrons out of nowhere. I'm just the one that dug it out because I was looking for it too. They found it, and they found it. Now what do you want to do? That's where it kind of stopped, I guess. A civilian tinfoil hat, that's me, translated that paper and others into a digestible concept for a photochemically produced storable electrons or artificial lightning, in air quotes. Bear in mind, that is not, this is not pushing existing electrons like ordinary current solar, old solar. This is the key distinction. Plus, it's a battery that recharges itself. With storage being a paramount concern in electro electric systems, the image of lightning long after the sun went down seemed appropriate. And look, there's my little emojis. Sun, sun means clouds, uh, atom, elect, uh, lightning bolt, lightning bolt leaves clouds, light bulb, electrical outlet, light at night in the city, and a battery. Okay, it's all right there. Four shot glasses. One way to think about building bottom up around this, should it be found workable, which it is, is with, I'm trying to be polite here and not too pushy, is with nanotubes and graphene, which seem to give liquid water solid properties. Read more ad nauseum on my webpage to this speech. And then you've seen this. You've seen that. We'll skip over that. And you've seen this and that. You know what it is. You know what that is. We're on to our third of four moments where I come at it from another angle. What would a solar breakthrough look like? Probably answering this guy who was a big shot in solar or energy, climate and clean energy investor. Uh, and there's some other big shots in that solar field in this thread, I think. 
And they're talking about the future of solar. So I try to elbow my way in there and say, well, you know, it would be better if you, you know, what if you uh, did what I wanted? And I go on here to explain the R&D for an ideal actual breakthrough is mostly done. And sitting in dusty, drawer, dusty drawers, drawers around the world, waiting for pragmatic types, like you and me, to find it and begin to put it to use, which has happened. That's me. Generally, it's water photochemistry, a solution that's going to seem painfully obvious. Yeah. Mm. Ironically, the answer is indeed cold water, infused with visible and ultraviolet in just the right ways, which we can mimic. Imagine solar that generates and stores new electrons from light quickly and repeatedly instead of merely pushing existing ones. Right? Better. Here's a short five-minute article, blah, blah, blah. We can call this, here's some buzzwords I was trying out, what Silicon Valley might call, quote, Solar X 1B, well, I guess 1 billion, because they like 10X and this X and that X. This is 1 billion X, plus storage all in one, unquote. That is, mind-numbing inevitable efficiency. <clears throat> and here's a link to the best, but dense, and highly ignored scholarly article. Please take me seriously. The data is in there, as well as some theory. It's just not discussed pragmatically, and the potential value is obscured. <sighs> it's right there. And here's some more tweets you've seen before, repeated tweets. Just a different angle on the same old thing. A solar angle, a battery angle, an energy density angle, and a harnessing angle. So now we'll finish up with our energy density angle. You like that, don't you? Pardon me. Because I think... Well, you have energy density over time. Isn't that what you want? You got it. My voice is going a little bit. Okay, so here we take the energy density angle with our same image from Dave DeCello.com. I like that. EAQ sounds cool. Look, look at that on a building, huh? Yeah. Okay, Elon Musk. Chiming in. Way before he bought Twitter X. Back in... This is amazing. I, 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 haven't, I haven't looked at these for a while, but I looked at them today. And I noticed that a guy with 178 million followers who owns the place, talking about his... Well, I'll read it to you. It only got 40 retweets, 40 responses, and 126 likes. This guy can blow his nose and get 10 million likes. Anyway, he's answering somebody named Yes Andre. Yes Andre, whose name fits right in the sentence, doesn't it? Yes Andre. I'm a big fan of ultracapacitors. Was going to do my PhD at Stanford on them. So, that's good. So we're talking about, he's talking about this. I see an opening six years later. But we need a breakthrough in energy density. Yeah. Plus you need capacitors that recharge themselves and stuff. Don't you? Imagine your cars recharging themselves. No plugs. Anyway, was going to do my Ph.D. at Stanford on them. I guess he did pay PayPal first. But we need a breakthrough in energy density. We're right on that. We're right on. Thumbs up. Like. I like that tweet, probably. So I respond. 40 responses. 
Here's the energy density breakthrough, Elon Musk. Glassy water ice. Possibly in graphene. Described in just six tweets. Please look at it. So, I don't know if he ever did or what. And uh, But anyway, that's what I was doing those days. The energy density solution. And then I pitch him the uh, LinkedIn article. A short introductory article. Been superseded. It's still up. I don't use LinkedIn as much as I should. Or a, a short introductory article about its all-in-one storage and generation of new electrons. From visible and ultraviolet, he's a big solar guy too, with batteries in his cars, with low energy pair production. So, that would be good. That's not your grandpa's solar or his batteries, meaning that stuff's, uh, you know, it's going to be uh, transcended one of these days with, you brought it up, you brought it up, energy density solutions. It replaces both hardwired nature at its most elegant. In other words, we're just copying on, copying, we're copying nature. We know that works. These guys did it in a lab by accident. Thank goodness, because if they didn't, I'd be just, uh, you know, toting it. Uh, well, there were other papers. There are a lot of other papers, but this one put it all in the right place. I mean, there were patches and patchworks. And uh, I found this on some goofy, because I would see the title and say, we're not talking about ionization, which is the title of the thing. And it's in the abstract, and it's in it's all mostly useful, not useful to me. But some search term brought it up, and uh, I, it was like sort of a eureka moment for me. <laughs> I was so glad to find it. But... Because I've been going for years and so close, then that really nailed it to the point where I can make a fool of myself and feel, feel good about it. So I uh, send him some Elon Musk, some other tweets here that you've already seen. So I think we're almost done here. We are done. We are done here with the moment section. So now I'm going to the last words, which... I don't know what they were. Uh, I, I I think I included them already in some ad libs. I can't think of anything else. There may be more videos on this. I want to strike now while I'm ready with my new camera. The time is now. And uh, so I think we're just about out. I think I'm going to pause and then make a little outro. I can't think of anything else right now to do. It just says last words. And I think I said them. So I thank you for your attention. Like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. We'll see you next time, whenever that is. So let's say goodbye. Let's see. Let's have me waving to the screen. Right, left, left, right. So we'll see you next time, folks. Let's pause and leave.